Earthquakes, landslides, typhoons, tsunamis. We call them natural disasters. But the toll they take on the most vulnerable, especially children, is unnatural. The numbers of those killed, injured or made destitute by natural hazards is due mainly to a lack of preparedness, sometimes environmental mismanagement and occasionally corruption. Children on the front line comes from the front line of disasters. We focus on young people who are taking it upon themselves to reduce the risks to themselves and to their communities. This time, Children on the Front Line is in Sierra Leone. Again, the subject is recovery from disaster, not from the natural kind, but from the man-made version. The disaster that befell this West African country was a decade-long civil war. Greed for diamonds, exacerbated by ancient tribal divisions, lay at its root. The war was to turn yet another African country, rich in natural resources, into a failed state. The conflict left an estimated 50,000 people dead and many thousands more mutilated before it ended in 2002, following the intervention of British troops. The war in Sierra Leone was extraordinarily brutal. In a country of five million people, where more than half are under 18, unsurprisingly, many of the casualties were children. According to the UN, up to 10,000 children fought in the conflict, and both sides trained the children to be effective killers. Those who survived are still living with the nightmares. This, this is Bernard. This is Pistol. The disaster for Sierra Leone is having thousands of young adults whose formative years were spent on learning to kill fellow human beings. Ndifi was 11 years old when he was captured by the rebels. If I'm not trying, they have killed me in rebel time in my kidney. I, I, I accept, I join, I join the group to go to arrest people to kill them. Things to them, well, well, Pity people, pity people, uh, kill them, do everything what she will do. Feel bad that I'm not cool to punish some people in the, in the war. Yes. There are thousands of ex-combatants like Ndifi. They will have to bear the physical and psychological scars for life. To be trained to be a killer in the formative years of life is not something that is easily forgotten. For those working to restore civil society in Sierra Leone, the ever-present concern is that they may be tempted to take up the gun again. So the challenge is finding an alternative to a life of violence, and that means finding gainful employment. But in Sierra Leone, officially one of the half-dozen poorest countries in the world, Alternative, peaceful forms of employment are few and far between. Plan International, a 70-year-old non-governmental organization or NGO, is working with former soldiers. They have been literally abandoned because uh, they have nothing to do. And now, five or six years after the war, these children have gone into adolescence or some are uh, young adults. And they end up going back to idleness, so just a little spark of something they can erupt into violence. American hip-hop music is hugely popular among the young people of Sierra Leone. But it's been condemned for its violent messages. Indeed, during the war, the rappers sung hatred to the youthful fighters. But now there's been an about turn, and the rappers are singing a new tune, this time for peace and for nation building. My name is Med Mix, Rex Spectra for Sierra Leone. I got my niggas around me. Who the king? Black M. Yo, Bogus Slim for sure. Oh, we are all respects, you know, rappers. 
you know, we rap for kids, you know. Respect Rappers is a collective of around 30 performers, many of them ex-combatants. The rappers' street performances draw crowds of young people. Mom, I feel a pain in my heart, Mom. When I see the children in the street struggling the life, Mama, I feel a pain in my heart, Mom. And when I see the children in the street struggling the life, I rap about peace because I see a lot of destruction happening. And so many people lose their lives. Like me, too, they killed my father. You know, they killed my father. Rebel killed my father during 1998. They came in and they started to stab him, firing, you no know, gunshots. That's why we are singing, you know, for the world to know what is not good. What in Afghanistan, what in Iraq, what in Somalia. The next generation are coming, so we need to help them to be peaceful life, live in a peaceful world. War, 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 making the BBC headlines. That's why I mean, rap for peace. Peace. The musicians have taken the place of the journalist as one of the agents of the fourth estate in uh, exposing uh, corruption, in exposing uh, mismanagement, and are calling for change. We are jobless, right for job, job, but no way, we don't have no job. So that is why we decided to, ent uh, to, to go into the music. Oh. The music has exploded. Everywhere you turn in Sierra Leone, right presently, youths are doing music. Our message is, is going down. If you engage yourself in producing music, every day you come together, you sing, you keep yourself busy, you keep your minds engaged. Peace. A vital part of getting their message across is the Respect Rappers Music Workshops in schools. These workshops, we do invite these kids to, to express themselves. So I believe most of them inspire through us. And I believe they got the message, that's why they love the same idea. So they, they too will love to play music. Bad boys, they never kill a friend for morning. Bad boys, they never kill a friend for morning. Bad boys, bad boys, bad boys. The rappers are teaching children about their rights and inspiring them to finish studying. Bad boys, they never we love respect so much because they do so many things about the children's rights. Because some parents, they do not know the children's rights. They bully the child a lot. Children, do you love schooling? Yes! Go to school! We are going to school Cause learning is better than silver and gold Respect help a mother know the responsibility of the children. So know that is they are right to go to school. Mama, try tell Papa make you put me in a school. I want to go to school. I want to go to school. Most of our kids right now in Sierra Leone, 80% of them did not go to school. So this is the problem. So respect is, 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 is here to make sure that most of these kids, we get them in, we bring them in. Respect is responsible for them to send them to school. In this impoverished country, those with little education have to find whatever work they can on the city streets. You can see here again, little smaller you know, guys standing here. They need jobs, you know. These guys are all needing jobs because they don't want to go and steal and do other things, you know. That's why they are trying to help themselves. You know, that's why these guys are, are washers. These young people each wash around 10 vehicles a day. For each one washed, they'll earn 1,000 leones, around 50 American cents. Other children, some not yet teenagers, scrape a living from fishing Freetown's natural harbor, the third largest in the world. How old are you? That's why it's, this one is uh, 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. It's like I said, it's, it's 11 years. Washing cars, fishing, in Sierra Leone, they are tiny, hesitant steps towards building normality. For Issa Davis, 
It's about making the kids believe again that what passes for the ordinary in most countries will become ordinary here too. It's about making the young victims of a failed state believe they have a role to play in its recovery. One way of preventing conflict from occurring in this country is to engage the minds of the youth, to make them go gainfully employed, to give them work to do, give them trade, give them sustainable livelihoods, sustainable means of getting their living. Yeah. In part two, we see how the motorcycle taxi business and a radio station are also helping to carve out a non-violent future for the traumatized youth of this West African country. Sierra Leone emerged from a decade-long civil war in 2002. It left a generation of young people traumatized. According to the UN, 350,000 children became orphans. Some of these then became combatants during the 10 years of civil war. The country tore itself apart. The legacy of the human-made disaster, with diamonds and tribal rivalries as its principal causes, was a country with no infrastructure left. 2002 was year zero for Sierra Leone. A basic step in the rehabilitation of former child soldiers is the ability to earn an honest living. And in the town of Bombali, motorcycle taxis are providing a chance to stay on the straight and narrow. Some riders own their own bikes, but most hire them for around $10 a day and it's quickly become one of the few ways for youngsters to make a living. The moment you buy a bike, more than five or six people will approach you. Can I, can I use it? Can I, can I be a subordinate? Can you be my boss? That is why you see many, 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 many young people engage in biking as a way of uh, forgetting about violence, forgetting about burglary or robbery. Despite it becoming a popular form of transport, many of the riders barely get by. I just have this bike riding in order for me to survive myself, in order not for me to do it a bad way, whether to thief or do any other thing. 19-year-old Issa Kanu and older brother Sori have worked as taxi riders for two years. I just trying it in order, in order way not for me to thief or do any other bad thing. That's why we are trying this, this bike. Okay, come. The brothers carry up to 50 passengers and can take up to $12 a day in fares. But after paying for fuel and the hire of the bike, each brother makes less than $2 a day. I will be fortunate to have 40,000 every week. And that money I used to buy my shoes, cloth and everything. Issa and Sori start riding at 7 a.m. and finish at midnight. But they take afternoons off so that they can go to school. I like school because I want to be somebody, somebody in the future. Yeah. Hope for Sierra Leone comes from the enthusiasm and belief young people like Issa and Sori have in education. For like many children, their schooling stopped during the war. They save the little they earn and use it to pay for their school fees. You write on the topic that is levels of organization of life. You see, please don't forget that is a characteristic of a living organism. One day, they will die. During the war, the brothers managed to stay out of the militias, but their lives were affected just as profoundly as a child soldier's. When the rebel attacked there, we ran away with my father. They destroyed our house, destroyed all our properties. During the war, they captured some people and they cut their hands. Some even took knife and took someone. They used the tires 
motor tires and they burn, they can burn someone. We have suffered a lot, that's all. But if a brother that's so kind to me, they have killed me with this war. Some of our people are innocent. They just killed. You just kill them for nothing. I hope now it's going to be a, a peace, continuous peace. Recovery from a man-made disaster, such as a decade-long war, means putting back basic elements of a civil society. In Moyamba, a small town 45 kilometers from the capital, a community radio station offers fresh hope of normality. And what makes this station a bit special is that it's run by the youth, dedicated to giving young people a voice. Hello and welcome to the news in English. Almost 80% of the station's output of 14 hours a day is aimed at children. 18-year-old Harriet Tucker has been a presenter since Modcar first went on air two years ago. It helps the children express themselves, help them to know their rights, preach about their rights, and even make, let them know their responsibilities, tell the people in charge whenever they see something happening that affects children, they come to the radio, talk about it, call us about it, and the authorities in charge will know that the children are really um, aware of what is happening and try to put a stop to it. Children as young as four and five know the station and some appear in the programs. Today we are at the St. Joseph's Preschool to do Tiny Thoughts Special with them, a program we've been doing since the start of the radio. Are you ready, children? Yes. Are you ready? Do Are you ready? Now we have the children say some rhymes. Big mango, a small mango, all are eating. Yes, talk now. London Bridge is falling down. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London These children are young children coming up. What they, the aunties teach them in school, they have the opportunity to express themselves out. And when they sit at home, listen to their voices, they become happy. And it makes them become outspoken when they are older in school and gives them confidence to speak in public. Budding broadcasters are encouraged to develop programs and ideas for discussion groups on child rights. So far, the topics covered include early marriage, child trafficking, and rape. Moyamba, I think, is notorious for rape cases of adults raping children. Children as young as eight, as young as seven, these adult people rape them. But when once the children started to expose these uh, pedophiles through the radio, the level of uh, rape cases is very, very minimal now in Moyamba as compared to before the radio was established. Hello listeners, you are welcome to yet another edition of our usual program, Focus on Children. On as well as tackling social issues, the station also reports on and disseminates information about health care, specifically disease prevention. We'll start by identifying some of these disasters and cite places where they've occurred, especially in Moyamba district. Like diarrhea and malaria. And as for diarrhea, it has been occurring in Moyamba township here. And for malaria, um, almost everywhere in Moyamba district, malaria has been affecting children. 17-year-old Philip is a reporter. Philip's been trained how to gather material and produce radio programs. We are going, I'm going to do a story on the disaster that has been happening in Moyamba. Especially there was a uh, diarrhea with vomiting outbreak in the section of Kedi Town. Knock, knock. Yeah. Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Yeah. How are you? Fine. In the past two months, scores of people have been struck down by sickness and diarrhea. What actually caused this outbreak of diarrhea and with vomiting in this, this community? Do you know what they're studying? 
In some cases, the outbreak's been fatal. They lost four lives. A baby, a man, a woman, and a young man in their community. This was due to uh, the river. Like many rural communities, these villages in Moyamba rely on the local river for their main water supply. Okay, so this is the river which they use to launder, they wash there, and at the same time, they use it as drinking water. At the top of it, people do the same thing there, but they excrete there. When everything gets down here, they use it as drinking water. They believe that it was the root cause of the diarrhea with vomiting. After listening to the news about the outbreak and its probable cause, the villagers themselves took action to provide clean drinking water. He was just explaining uh, the information he gets on radio uh, by children. He said due to the radio program, they've started digging a water well so that the sickness may go away. A community radio station, rapping for peace, scraping a living from motorcycle taxes to pay school fees. All hopeful signs a country can try to heal the scars of its self-inflicted disaster. But Sierra Leone, despite its diamond wealth, remains stubbornly at the bottom of the UN's League of the Poorest Countries. And it still has thousands of former child killers, now in their late teens, who are looking for a new life.